Athletic Park Wellington is the spiritual home of the All Blacks, but today it's the All Whites, as the New Zealand soccer team are known, who take over this rugby stadium for their second international against England. And the biggest factor may well be the strong wind for which this ground is notorious. Southerly gales blow straight from the Antarctic across the Cook Strait between the two islands which make up New Zealand. And the full force of that wind is felt in a stadium very much exposed to the elements. It's blowing from right to left and is bound to have an effect on the game. Now let's check on the team news. Number two, Gary Charles, becomes the 35th player used by Graham Taylor this season. He's one of three Nottingham Forest players in the back four, and there are three Crystal Palace men in the starting lineup, including number 10, Ian Wright, who makes his first appearance of the tour, and number 11, John Solako, who, like number nine, Brian Dean, starts an England game for the first time. It's also a big day for Stuart Pearce, who captains his country for the first time in the absence of Gary Lineker, who's away on club duty with Spurs in Japan. And now the New Zealand team. New Zealand have made just one change from the side that ran England so close in Auckland, and that's in goal, where 27-year-old Grant Schofield wins his fifth cap and takes over from Clint Gosling. Dunford, Ironside and Halligan have all overcome niggling injuries and number five, Kerry Evans of Oxford United is the most capped player in the New Zealand team. Grant Schofield wearing 16 there is the goalkeeper at the bottom of the caption. So Stuart Pearce's first job as captain was to take the toss here today and England will have the win behind them in the first half. England back to their familiar white, New Zealand playing today in all red. Here's David Platt, up to the target man, Brian Dean. And the first free kick. There's Gary Charles, what a big moment for the 21-year-old who was born in East London. But uh, it was Nottingham Forest who spotted his talent. Here's his clubmate, Stuart Pearce. And it goes to Ian Wright, number 10. Here's Wise, Charles, and an awkward one. Oh, goodness me, that was nearly a, a dramatic start to the international career of Gary Charles, Trevor Brooking. It was. I'm not sure he was actually aiming for goal, but uh, it was one of those crosses uh, that turned out to be a worry for the goalkeeper. As you can see, he knocked it along. Dennis Wise turned, knocked it back to him. A first-time cross, a bit over hit, and suddenly Grant Schofield having to scurry back just over the crossbar. Well, he's reached the centre circle with that one. That was Mark Wright, Dennis Wise. Ian Wright running down the right-hand side, marked by Dunford, who was uh, given the job of shadowing Lineker in the first match. I think he's turned his attentions to Ian Wright today. Here's De Jong for New Zealand. And Chris Woods keeps the goal-giving position for the third consecutive match on tour. Now, Woods does have the win with his kicks, and it comes off the defender's head. And here's a chance for Dean. Defender got a foot in. Vital touch by uh, Roger Gray, I think it was, who just got back in time. One of those where perhaps as a striker, Brian Dean might have hit it early. It, it sat up quite nice. He had the extra touch, and at this level, you, you don't always get the extra touch. De Jong tries to find Michael McGarry. Goal kick. Good applause from the New Zealand crowd. Uh, the first uh, opportunity for their side to build up. Michael McGarry eventually being blocked out by Des Walker. But it'd be up to the forwards, if at all possible, just to hold up play, try and relieve a bit of the pressure which New Zealand are bound to be under playing against such a strong win. header on was by Solako, then Dunford for New Zealand, Solako again. Good efforts and good save. Graham Taylor's instructions to John Solako and the other attackers were to pepper the goalkeeper with shots while we've got the wind, and he certainly uh, tested Grant Schofield there. It was swerving a bit, 
and the keeper did well. It's a corner. And for this, Mark Wright has come into the six-yard box behind Brian Dean. But uh, not the corner that Dennis Wise had in mind. Well, it's a dreadful corner. You can't hang the ball up there and uh, it, expect it not to move 10 or 15 yards. But, I mean, the, the key to that build-up was this opportunity here. As you can see, John Salako turning inside. He's a good two-footed player, sees the sight of goal, hits it with his right foot. Good touch because it was on its way in. And that'll do Grant Schofield a lot of good as well. Good strong header by Malcolm Dunford, the New Zealand captain. And Ian Wright's going to find it quite hard to shake him off, I would think, as Lineker did. He's uh, a dependable fellow, is Dunford, 28 years old. He and Kerry Evans, the longest-serving members of this New Zealand squad, giving it a, a backbone of experience. Here's Wise. Ian Wright. Salako on the right now. That in the penalty area, so was Dean. It came to Pierce. It's a goal for England. And the captain strikes past Grant Schofield after 12 minutes play. And fitting that Stuart Pearce, on the day he leads the team for the first time, should be the man who puts England ahead with that tried and trusted left foot. Well, once it uh, was heading towards Stuart Pearce, after a good player game by Salako, he's made a very impressive start. As you see, Brian Dean lets it run across him, and once it's on the left foot from that range, I feared the worst for New Zealand, and into the corner, Grant Skill, Gofield, no chance, and a very happy skipper. Something of a lucky omen for England is Stuart Pearce. I think, apart from the uh, match that was settled on penalties in the World Cup, England have only ever lost one game when Pearce has been in the starting lineup. Ian Wright. That's a foul by Ferris. England have got the early goal that they were denied in the first two matches on tour and now they're packing the centre of the penalty area for this free kick from Wise. <laughs> Missed kick by Ferris. Offside flags up. That won't count by David Platt. <laughs> Goalkeeper initially did quite well, Trevor, bearing in mind he had about uh, seven or eight players to come through there. I was very surprised uh, Grant Schofield uh, didn't get uh, a free kick because uh, three England players almost came at him and uh, one or two knocked him off stride. They couldn't then get out of the penalty area and there was two or three offside then. Graham Taylor, whose team have now passed the record for the best start by an England manager. It's a question now of how many more games he can go. He's got this one and one more on tour. And then next September... Germany come to Wembley for a friendly. Good interception by Mark Wright, who brought the ball out skillfully there. He's got two to his right. One of them is big Brian Dean here. Dennis Wise in a good position. Overhead kick, but he was offside. It wouldn't have been a goal, but it was a good try. And England showed imagination there in the way Mark Wright brought the ball through. And finally, the setup was for Wise. Look much uh, more assured today, Mark Wright, and carried the ball well, fed Brian Dean just onside at that stage. You see Dennis White then just running offside once the ball was played, and uh, despite those two coming in at the far post, the linesman's flag was already up. Still, it was uh, an attempt at the spectacular by the little Chelsea player. their turn to uh, push players forward. Be taken by Malcolm Dunford. That's Halligan. Pierce's header out. Oh, what a good shot by De Jong. Magnificent volley. Uh against the wind as well. I'm not sure how he quite got the power, but it uh, 
was one of those balls that just hung up in the air here and uh, as it was sort of half headed away by Stuart Pierce, it dropped nicely for De Jong but he hit it so well uh, another yard or two further out it could have dipped over Chris Wood's head yes we get another view uh, here of what happened it was uh, as you say Stuart Pierce who headed the ball away and look how De Jong struck that he just wanted it to dip didn't he Woods didn't though it was close Salako Australian referees uh, seem to have their own version of stoppage time. We certainly saw that the other day when uh, we were about 48 minutes in before uh, Lineker scored. And now Richard Lorenz has played a good two minutes here at the end of the first half. So despite having the huge wind advantage and having nearly all the play, England had to settle for one goal in the first half, put away by Stuart Pearce on the day he captains his country for the first time. The uh, FIFA flag there giving you some indication of the strength of the wind as it bites in from across the sea. At the start of the second half, England have brought on number 15, David Hurst of Sheffield Wednesday, in place of Brian Dean of Sheffield United. So Hurst, who had 45 minutes in Australia, should now get 45 minutes in New Zealand. Gary Charles. David Batty down there on the England bench and uh, Laurie McMenemy and Graham Taylor will no doubt have uh, discussed what happens now that the wind is uh, against England. Here's Stuart Pearce. Well, he's got a decent uh, enough length on that one. Up to Hurst. Here's Solarco. on Sonarco cross I think the idea of bringing David Hurst it would be to add the pace alongside Ian Wright because when you're playing uh, sort of against the wind there won't be the opportunities to capitalize on Brian Dean's height so they're, they're looking to to clip the ball over the top the wind hold it up and enable sort of Wright and Hurst to get behind the New Zealand three central defenders that was Mark Wright Ian Wright Solako, Thomas, good strong run by Jeff Thomas, there's he's going all the way, cut it back well to Wise, and Ian Wright surely, Ian Wright off the line, and Thomas comes in again, saved by the goalkeeper, oh. well New Zealand escapes, and they're on the attack with Michael McGarry, England still trying to work out how they failed to score number two, Certainly, uh, Wise had an opportunity to put it away before Ian Wright's effort was cleared. It was a great run by Jeff Thomas here. He went through just about everybody and he cut the ball back really well with his left foot. There's Wise, who didn't control it properly. Ian Wright finally came round to get a shot in and Roger Gray it was who kicked it off virtually off the line and then Another shot by Thomas was saved by the keeper. Here's Gray. Ian Wright. Gary Charles. David Hurst making for the near post. Chance for his first international goal and he takes it. David Hurst only on the pitch for five minutes or so has made it 2-0 to England. And the other newcomer, Gary Charles, playing a very important part, Trevor Brooking, in the build-up. Superb run by Gary Charles. Uh, I think that's what Graham Taylor has been looking for, to, to get some movement from full-backs down this right-hand side. Ian Wright holds up the ball very well, releases it inside the defender there. Gary Charles looks across, just behind David Hurst. He keeps his balance very well, turns, and that was the crucial second goal now. Gives England a bit of breathing space here. Gary Charles looking up. But it's good to see him. He's got great 
speed and athleticism. David Hurst, 32 goals for Sheffield Wednesday this season. The season just ended. Two for England B against Switzerland uh, not long before he uh, came out here. It was a late call-up. And after not getting into the game really in Australia and being substituted, he now scores within five minutes of replacing Brian Dean. Big moment for him in the England shirt. Michael McGarry. Of course, New Zealand would love even the consolation of one goal against England. It would be uh, something of a benchmark in their football because the two countries had never met at full international level before Monday. And we're here largely to celebrate the centenary of the New Zealand Football Association. Oh, and here's a chance for Declan Edge. He's onside, and he's lifted it high over the bar. The former Shrewsbury and Notts County player was put through there, and the England offside, or the line of defenders, looked towards the linesman, and Barry Tasker of Wellington, who's the linesman on the far side, did not raise his flag. In fact, I think he was absolutely right not to raise his flag. Edge came from behind an England player and should have perhaps done rather better with that. Now Mark Wright. Salako. Ian Wright. Good save by Grant Schofield. Another good turn by Salako, and it was Ian Wright. Not easy to, easy to head those sort of balls. As you see, Salako just makes the opening, pulls it back, but it's a hanging ball, and you've got to make all the power yourself. And so, good downward header, but well held by Schofield. Ian Wright to Pierce. Didn't really get a hold of it. Away by Dunford. Oh, that hit the referee. Richard Lawrence uh, making an inadvertent uh, intervention there. But it's Salako for England now. Off the defender. Goalkeeper. Hurst missed his kick. Hurst wise. Hurst again. Oh, series of ricochets and might have beens. Ending, in fact, with an England player on the ground who I think is wise. Well, England should have scored again there. Superb run by John Salako. Cut inside, then went outside. That's his cross. Gofield not getting it away. And David Hurst trying to break the net rather than making sure he kept it on target. And uh, I think David Hurst should have got his second goal there. Quarter of an hour to go in this uh, international match in Wellington. New Zealand nil, England two. Two other goalkeepers on the tour, incidentally, are Nigel Martin, who's on the bench today from Crystal Palace, and Tony Coton of Manchester City. But Graham Taylor made it clear to all the players that there was no guarantee of a game for everybody on this tour. And there are others like uh, Tony DiRigo and Steve Hodge who haven't had a kick yet of the outfield players. That's forward by Halligan, and there's Edge. Well, that opened up for New Zealand because Mark Wright seemed to lose his footing. And it was Thomas Edge who had his chance. Dunford. And the crowd with Kerry Evans coming forward now. The crowd getting behind the home side as Gary Charles steps in. It's a good heading opportunity. Uh, the cross was the sort of cross that you, I'm sure at the start of the half, New Zealand were, were hoping to, to put into the penalty area, but it was a river tame header. Here's Roger Gray. Edge. Gary Charles. Oh, what a mistake he's made there. It's Michael McGarry for New Zealand. Surely he'll score. Well, was it behind the line? It was out by Des Walker. And McGarry fails with perhaps New Zealand's best chance, courtesy really of Gary Charles, who will be relieved that his Forest colleague got him out of jail there. I don't think he actually knew that McGarry was there. It's a corner to New Zealand. Danny Halligan. Sulaco. Right. And Sulaco's onside because he was inside his own half. John Sulaco for England. Has hit the post. Oh, and the follow-up's gone wide. 
Jeff Thomas. I don't believe how he could miss that. And neither does he. Amazing uh, couple of minutes, wasn't it? Gary Charles going to sleep, learning a valuable lesson. Des Walker getting him out of trouble. And then a great break between Ian Wright and John Salaku. Tries to clip it over Grant Schofield. A vital touch, comes back off the post. And there, Jeff Thomas just side-footing it home, he thinks. But no, he misses. This is right. Platt. Oh, he missed his kick completely. Oh, here's Pierce. A lot of errors here in the uh, last few minutes. But New Zealand are breaking again. They've got uh, De Jong on the ball and three others up with him. One of them is Ironside here. McGarry's on the far side. It's too high and too long. Well, Michael McGarry, who couldn't have reached that cross from Ironside, We'll look back on that and think he could have been the first man to score for New Zealand against England in a full international. And here was his chance. He got past Chris Woods. Now watch Des Walker. It certainly wasn't over the line, was it? He cleared it well. And McGarry's chance went. Here's Wise offside against Ian Wright. We're now in the 48th minute. And... Uh, these Australian referees seem to have their own idea about how long a half should last, so we'll just wait and see how long it is before he uh, blows the final whistle. Malcolm Dunford has made his way forward for New Zealand. It's going to be Evans to take the kick. Woods collecting that completely unchallenged. And the referee brings to an end the second international between New Zealand and England. Stuart Pearce, the scorer of the first half goal, to which the substitute, David Hurst, added the second five minutes after coming on. So two victories here in New Zealand for Graham Taylor's team. The second one more convincing, both in terms of the margin and indeed the performance, I would say. And England now move on to Kuala Lumpur with a tour record of three wins out of three. Graham, were you happier with that performance than with the first match against New Zealand? Yes, I mean, I think...